So in this video, we're going to talk about how do we draw the lowest structure of N2O4. All right, very interesting molecule. And we want to figure out how do we draw the lowest structure of this compound. So the first thing I'm going to do is write out my atoms and how many of them I have. So in this case, I have two nitrogens and I have four oxygens. Right now, I'm simply going to get the number of valence electrons simply because those are what what are involved in bonding. So from the periodic table, we should know that nitrogen gives me five valence electrons, and oxygen gives me six valence electrons. So the idea is that I want to be able to get the total number of electrons that I have to place. Right. So in this case, since I have two nitrogens, it would be two times five. In that case, it would be ten. So this is approximately about 10 right and then we know from our math since we have uh, four oxygens each worth in six electrons a piece that means that we must multiply four times six so this is essentially 24 right so in this case I'm adding 24 uh, plus 10 and so essentially I have 34 electrons to play with right now at this point we have to find some sort of way to put the, the compound together um, where we satisfy the octet rule, but also we do not surpass or, or, or do not uh, go below this number th uh, 34. So it has to be exact uh, the amount of electrons that we've counted, right? So if I go ahead and put a nitrogen and let's say I form a single bond, uh, let's say I form a single bond between the oxygen, right? And let's say I form another single bond and just going to put a nitrogen here, right? So the lowest, right? Start Not starting out high, not starting out low. I'm just setting up a framework that I could uh, essentially work with, right? Now, let's satisfy, the, right? So let's satisfy this oxygen's octet rule, right? Now it has only two electrons around it, so I could essentially put three pairs of lone pairs around this oxygen, right? And now this oxygen becomes two, four, six, eight. Now, one of the things that I want to stretch with, uh, stress with you with regards to drawing Lewis structures is that, especially um, these kind of organic Lewis structure in a sense, is that a lot of the times it's usually try and failure, right? So it, it's there's no specific way, right? Obviously, with going through the math and getting your total electrons, that's something that most people usually do. But with respect to putting the structure together, uh, there's simply no really way. You just have to find a way to put it together, right? And so essentially what I mean is that, let's say if you start out with an oxygen, but then you have a nitrogen here, and then let's say you have another oxygen here, right? Something that's totally different from what I have, that's okay, right? It will work your, it will work yourself, it will, it will work itself out. And if it's, in, if it's indeed incorrect, then you could always reference back to this number. And we're going to get to this uh, at the end of the video. So I just had to put that out there. Now, this, oxygen's looks, this oxygen looks satisfied, so I'm okay right here. Right? Now, I could put a single bond to this oxygen. Uh, to, I could put another oxygen here around this nitrogen. And it has a single bond. Now, at this point, nitrogen is actually not satisfied, right? So, I'm going to go ahead and actually form a double bond. Right? So this, uh, at this point now, I have eight electrons around the nitrogen, right? So, this becomes two, four, six, eight, right? And like I said before, could I put a lone pair here? Absolutely, right? But we would see that it probably wouldn't work, right? So, like I said before, these in, the, in, in, in a lot of cases, these are try and failure, right? So, now, since this nitrogen is satisfied, what about this oxygen, right? This oxygen only needs two two pairs of electrons, right? Because I have only, uh, at this point, I have two, four. I only have four electrons around this oxygen. So I could actually put two pairs of lone pairs around it. And this oxygen is satisfied with respect to its octet rule. So this oxygen is satisfied, this is satisfied, and the nitrogen in the middle is satisfied. So at this point, we've used two oxygens and we've used, we've used two nitrogens. So we only have two more oxygens to place. Right. I could form a single bond here, right, between this nitrogen and this oxygen, and I could actually replicate what I see here, right? So I could have a double bond, right? 
and, and and now this nitrogen becomes satisfied with respect to its octet rule now this oxygen is not satisfied again because this nitrogen is satisfied the only other option i have is to put the electrons in the pair of, in the pairs of in the form of lone pairs around this oxygen right now like again we said that this nitrogen is octet is satisfied so the only other place we have to put the electron is only on the oxygen we cannot put any more here right so this becomes two four six Right. So now this oxygen is satisfied. So let's let's look at our octet rule. This becomes two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. So this nitrogen is satisfied. This oxygen is satisfied. Two, four, six, eight. So this oxygen is satisfied. And this is in the same chemical environment. So this octet is satisfied. This nitrogen is pretty much the same as this. And so this is satisfied. Now let's count the total number of electrons that we counted because this is important. So let's count two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34. Now, this is a plausible Lewis structure for the N2O4 molecule. And the reason why is that because we've satisfied all our octet, right? We've satisfied our, all our octet. But we've also used the same, we've used the exact same electrons that we've counted, right? So the total electrons is equal to this number. Now, like I said before with the trinal failure, you would see that, let's say, for example, you put, you maybe put the structure like this together, right? I don't know, right? But let's say you put the structure like this together, for example, right? This is actually not a structure, but I'm just less sure than an example. You would see that when you count the total number of electrons, it would not equal to 34. So that's why counting the total number of electrons, again, is important, right? A last quick thing I want to mention about the structure is that there's actually some charges within the structures. Uh, so if you really do your formal charges, um, and, and this is not what the video is about, but it's essentially to show you that the oxygens are actually negative charge and the nitrogens are positively charged. Right, and if if you simply do the, the 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 formal charge, which I'm going to take a shortcut here because this is not what the video is about, we take the number of valence electrons in this case from the periodic table. So we're looking at oxygen, and we subtract that, but from the total number of electrons pertaining to the molecule, right? So this becomes two, four, six. But even though this is a single bond, so you would expect this to be two electrons. Remember, there's one electron from the oxygen and one from the nitrogen, right? So we're taking a shortcut in the formula. We ignore the electron for contributing from the nitrogen. So we only count the one contributing to the oxygen. So this is really two, four, six, seven, right? So this is six minus seven, and that is equal to negative one, right? So the charge on this is negative one. And if you do the same for, nit for nitrogen, for example, this nitrogen from the periodic table, we have five valence electrons minus uh, the total number of electrons around the, the nitrogen. So in this case, applying that same principle, this becomes one, two, three, four, right? So five minus four electrons, and that is positive one. Now notice that there's no charged, there's no charge in our molecular formula. And essentially there's no charge in the lowest structure as well, because positive and the negative cancel out, and a positive and a negative cancel out.